This is the second tutorial on iLink integration with Psych Toolbox for MATLAB. It is a continuation of the basic integration tutorial and assumes that you are familiar with the basic iLink integration with Psych Toolbox. If not, you can watch the first tutorial here. In this next tutorial, I will go through the steps required to create case contingent tasks and to show how to retrieve eye movement data online via Psych Toolbox. Before going through the code, however, I will briefly describe the data types saved by the eye tracker. iLink eye movement data consists of samples, eye position and pupil size recorded at every sample based on the tracker's sampling rate, and events such as saccades, fixations and blinks detected by the iLink parser. Here is some eye movement data recorded at 1000 Hz to give you an idea of what the data looks like. This is the raw data file converted to ASCII. The left column represents a timestamp every millisecond, and every millisecond we have a new sample which generally consists of gaze X and Y position as well as pupil size. Here is a plot on the right representing the samples, in this case the X gaze position samples over time. In the plot on the right, you can see these fast ballistic jumps in eye position over time, and these are saccade events, shown in yellow. When these saccade events are detected, they are marked in the data file as S-sac, the start of a saccade, and E-sac, the end of a saccade. Apart from the start and end times, E-sac events include additional data, such as start and end XY locations, as well as saccade amplitude and peak velocity. Similarly, non-saccade events such as fixations and blinks are also available. For instance, fixations, shown here in teal, are marked in the data file with an S-fix, the start of a fixation, and E-fix, the end of a fixation. Apart from the fixation start and end times, E-fix events include the duration, as well as average X, Y and pupil size of all samples within the fixation. Psych Toolbox can access these samples and events online for gaze contingent tasks. Samples are available online quickly, within a few milliseconds, while events can take some time to be available online, which is the time needed by the IDING parser to identify and verify them. This typically takes a few tens of milliseconds. There are two ways of accessing eye movement data online. The first one is a fast method. This method can only access samples, not events. It grabs the most recent sample every iteration of a loop in your Psych Toolbox code. If a sample is not used straight away by Psych Toolbox, it is effectively lost and replaced by a more recent sample. This method is quick, but it can miss samples if your loop is paused for a while to perform some other function. Missing samples is not necessarily a bad thing. Many experiments do not require all subsequent samples, but just the most recent sample before presenting a gaze contingent stimulus on the screen. The eye tracker is faster than most monitors and can provide many samples within each screen refresh cycle, and most of these samples can be ignored. The second method uses buffered data, which can be used to access both samples and events. This method makes use of a buffer that the idling builds online. You can think of this buffer as a queue or a list of items that, that accumulate over time. The items being samples and events that are added to the buffer as they become available. You can have Psych Toolbox run in a loop and at each iteration consume one item from the idling buffer, a sample or event starting from the oldest item in the buffer. If your code loops quickly for a period of time, it is able to consume all items in the buffer and catch up with the current, most recent sample or event issued by the tracker. You can use this method to access events online. For instance, if you need to know when a saccade has ended and find out the location of the end of the saccade event. You can also use this method to access samples online for instance, if you need to get all subsequent gaze position samples without missing any. I will now show how these two methods, the fast method and buffered data method, can be implemented starting with the fast method. 
It uses a function pair in a while loop. The first function, I link new float sample available, checks if a new sample is available online via the link. And if so, the next function, I link newest float sample, returns a MATLAB structure with the sample data such as gaze x y location. Let's take a look at a demo that uses this method to draw a gaze contingent dot at each screen refresh. So the dot location will be linked to the participant's gaze position. Once you install everything as recommended on our support site here, you should find this demo called Eiling GC Fast Samples in your Psych Toolbox installation directory, Psych Hardware, Eiling Toolbox, Eiling Demos, SR Research Demos, Case Contingent, GC Fast Samples folder. We can go through this demo from step 5.3 when the script starts recording eye movements. The code above this line has already been covered in the basic tutorial called iLink Integration with Site Toolbox, which I linked to previously. This demo first checks which I is being recorded. When we call iLink I available, it returns 0 if the left eye is being recorded, 1 for right, or 2 for binocular tracking. If we are recording binocularly, this demo retrieves monocular data anyway by updating the I used variable value to 1. After the initial stimulus presentation, we start a while loop, check that the eye tracker is still recording, then check if a new sample is available online. So if I link new float sample available returns a value bigger than 0, we call I link newest float sample, which returns a structure with sample data. If we scroll up to the top, we can see a list of values returned in the structure. So at every sample we can retrieve time, which is the EDF timestamp, type, in this case sample, which will have the value 200, GX, which is an array consisting of two values, left gaze X position, right gaze X position, GY, an array consisting of left gaze Y position, and right gaze Y position, PA, an array with two values, left eye pupil size, right eye pupil size, and some additional values. For this demo, we are interested in retrieving gaze, so we require GX and GY. As soon as we get a sample, we can save the structure as EVT and access gaze position as EVT.GX and EVT.GY at every iteration of the while loop. Here we are retrieving gaze for the eye we want via the eye used variable we created earlier to index the gaze data array. We are saving the gaze position in the variable x and y which are the gaze x and y coordinates. Then we create a gaze contingent red dot on the screen by drawing an ellipse with a 20 pixel radius around the retrieved x y gaze position. We flip the screen at the next retrace before moving on to the next iteration of the while loop. Note that the while loop will iterate only once every screen refresh. In the meantime there can be many gaze position samples in between that are ignored, but this is fine as we only need a sample just before we update the screen with the new location of the red dot. And we still have access to all gaze samples saved in the iLink data file if we analyze the data post hoc. Now let's look at the second approach, which uses buffered data to retrieve samples or events online. There are two main functions which we will be using within a while loop. At each iteration of the while loop, we first get the oldest item from the buffer, which can be a sample or event, via iLink get next data type, which returns EV type. We check if EV type contains the item we are looking for. In this example, we're waiting for the end of a saccade, so we're going to check if EV type is the end of a saccade event. If so, we access EVT, which is a MATLAB structure returned by iLink get flow data, and which contains information about the end of the saccade. We can then use this information for our gaze contingent task. For instance, we could present a target at the location of the end of the saccade, as we'll see in the next demo. 
The same method can be used to wait for other events, such as the start of a saccade, or the start and end of a fixation or blink, as well as to retrieve buffered samples if you need to access all subsequent samples online without missing any. To find the demo that shows how to use this function pair in the script, open the idling buffered end sack events demo, found in the same case contingent folder, GC buffered events, buffered end sack events directory. This demo waits for the end of sack cards made during each trial and retrieves the X and Y case location at the end of each sack card, so a red dot can be drawn on the screen at the sack card landing position. So let's go through it. The relevant code starts from step 5.3 of the script. First, we start recording eye movement data. We check which eye is being recorded and update the eye used variable accordingly, same as we did in the previous task. We start a while loop and check that we are still recording. Within this while loop, we are going to run the get next data type get float data function pair for about 100 milliseconds before presenting the initial stimulus. By looping before stimulus presentation, we make sure we consume all older items in the buffer and catch up with the most recent ones issued by the tracker. We are going to check if the item in the buffer is an end of saccard event. Here, we check whether 100 milliseconds of looping have elapsed so we can present the first stimulus. In the meantime, we call the iLink get next data type iLink get float data function pair to start consuming items in the buffer and catch up with the current item. When we call iLink get next data type, if the value it returns is the same as that of the end sack code, we have found an end of sack card event in the buffer. And now we can use it to access its event structure. Once the first stimulus has been drawn, so if at least 100 milliseconds have elapsed since we started the while loop, we can check whether we have data from the expected eye and at the start of the saccade evt.st time occurred after trial image onset, so we don't use saccades which started before the time period we are interested in. Here we are retrieving some saccade information such as the start time as well as the end x and y position of the saccade. We use these end x y positions to update the location of the target, so we draw an ellipse with a 20 pixel radius around the end of saccade location. This is a list of other saccade event properties that you can get online via Site Toolbox. At the top of this demo, you will also find a list of events and samples that can be retrieved online, as well as their properties down here. And that's the end of this tutorial on how to get idling data online via Site Toolbox. I hope you found it useful and please email us using the address below if you have any questions.